Well, we, we did do a survey together with the City Hall in the public services, the hospital, the prison, uh, the, the, the schools, the sports services. And what came out was that basically no one had met, except for the odd case here and there, someone who was gay or transsexual or transgender openly. Um, and so the numbers, and even in the workplace, the people working in those services, so the numbers showed that suddenly you have a place with 5,000 workers in the hospital, for example, and only a few are openly gay. And when you compare that to the, the official percentage, the average percentage of LGBT people in the world, which is 5 to 7 percent, then suddenly you see there is a problem. If people don't feel they can talk openly about themselves, something is wrong and the actual it is a responsibility of that service or the, the the working place to actually come out and take action Theatre of the Oppressed is a very um, original way, I think, of um, trying to make people see what oppression is. You really make them feel it because they have to act it. And they have to um, act a scenario and they have to be a person that maybe is oppressed or think about a situation that could help that person. So instead of just listening, you have to, and spectating, you have to become an actor yourself and really feel. And that's really powerful, yeah. Theatre de Presse is a um, political theatre, as many other political theatres in the, in the world. But uh, differently from the other, it is uh, called also non-ideological one. And this is very important, in my opinion, because you, you don't go to people to convince them about uh, your truth or your idea to find a solution, but you just uh, create a setting where the people, the groups, uh, marginalized groups or uh, any kind of group, can uh, reflect in a safe space uh, and uh, thanks to the, um, the different perspective that uh, any individual has, they can uh, try to find the alternatives. Theater of the Oppressed I think it's a great method for communities, especially for minority communities, to empower themselves, to take up space, just to be there, to be present, and to really demand the needs that they want and need and uh, maybe the rights they don't have and they would want to because they're, I don't know, maybe just basic human rights. Augusto Boal uh, was living in Brazil uh, in the 50s and he started as a classical director but he was uh, touched by the environment around, the social environment, the poverty and the discrimination, the violence in, the, in, the, in Brazil and uh, so he, tries to, he tried to find a way how I can help people, my, my, the people I live with uh, um, to face the problems that uh, they live. And so he started to move from the classical theater to an, an investigation, a research um, that uh, touched, uh, for instance, the Brecht, uh, the Bertolt Brecht approach, and also Stanislavski approach. And then finally he came uh, to a conclusion that uh, this kind of theater, uh, this kind of maiotic theater, could be very helpful. The development of theater of the press started from a technique, uh, very specific, and then developed uh, facing different environments, social environments. The method was developed in different ways. So this is also another richness of the method that is not fixed uh, once forever, but is in developing. Well, says that uh, you cannot be in the society if you don't want to change the society. Theo um, 
give you the awareness to be part of a system, a complex system. So you are not alone with your own uh, oppression and so on. <laughs> but you, if you are part of a system, you can change uh, a little bit. The Boal said that, uh, once that uh, every one of us is an actor uh, because to, to act is uh, in some way to double the reality, to be a person uh, as we are, a human being, but in the same time to be a character. So this uh, double side, uh, this uh, kind of uh, distance between uh, I am uh, in, a, in a way but I am playing in another way no, is what makes us uh, human, he said. Uh, there are exercises to develop the senses, you know, sensitiveness by senses. There are exercises uh, implying uh, trust. There are exercises uh, uh, implying uh, dialogue with another person or a group. And this way people slowly, slowly, step by step, are brought to uh, more trust, more confidence. Uh, and also they develop their ability to act, you know, to use the body. I think that most of the time we don't realize that we are 90% in our heads, that we just do all the work intellectually because our society and our school system is designed that way, that we do almost everything intellectually and we do not realize how important it is that, that we ingrain that in our bodies. And then in the second phase, when uh, we are searching for our stories, uh, there are different techniques. One is just to tell by, by words, and another one is to create an image using your own body or the other's bodies, uh, so you can visualize a situation, a situation by the other's body or your own body, but you can also create metaphors. No? Uh, so an image can be a real, no, like a picture, a real uh, reflection of reality, or can be also a metaphor of what you feel or what you, you perceived in the reality as a problem. And then the, finally, the techniques to find alternatives. The main is the forum theater, where people intervene to replace uh, the characters and to try their own uh, behavior, their own, their own solutions. And uh, there is image theater as well, and there are also cops in the head if the problem is much more internalized than external. Yeah. When you prepare a theater forum, you must make a character, the oppressed character, so the audience cannot uh, identify himself or herself to the protagonist. You learn that uh, an oppressor, an oppressor, have uh, his reason to be how it is. The typical approach uh, with a group uh, is to start from a group building phase uh, where the people can get in touch with uh, each other, can trust each other and then when uh, there is enough uh, trust for people, the second step is uh, to ask people to share some story, some experience that was an oppressive experience uh, in the group uh, and uh, transform this in uh, some, something uh, theatrical. And then the first step is to, um, to create something in common, something that uh, started from a personal story but becomes more and more a collective story, something that uh, people can recognize uh, as uh, them, uh, their story and uh, where an, an oppression is included and there is no solution. So the, the other step, the next step is to find alternatives, as I, said, I say. Um, and uh, finally, usually in the training, there is a moment where all these uh, uh, emotions and thoughts that were warmed up uh, are closed in some way in order to enable people to go back to reality and to use what they learned emotionally, intellectually, in the body and so, uh, in order they are able to apply in their own life as individual or as group also if, uh, if possible.
to that, I saw one show, uh, it was about stalking. And uh, I thought, for the very first part, I thought, what, what is this? And then I, I saw the potential and I was so involved in what was going on, I really thought that that could be a very good tool for going, for example, into schools and making people live uh, those moments. Uh, it's pretty powerful. I, I do believe it should, it should be something we can use more. The, the small steps that we can make with empowered individuals and communities for a social change. Just the, that really strong bottom-up approach. The forum is like the medium for the people that has already the critical consciousness that I want to do something, but uh, I, I it don't have the, uh, the will so much or the context is not the right. So to be ready and more ready the next time to do things. It was like a process. Uh, every year, every forum we prepared, every performance, I learned something new from, about me, but also about the world. And so we, well, we just become all the same. Uh, it wasn't different anymore. I, I wasn't different anymore, so I hadn't anything to be ashamed of. And the strength of the Theatre of the Oppressed is that it's not a dry, workshop or a conference. It's something that people actually have to get involved in and it's something different. Uh, they can open up, they can widen their perspective uh, face to the problem. So this is the main, uh, the essence of the difference and we can call that also a maieutic approach. No? We try through Theatre de Oppressed to, um, to push people to take off, uh, take out from themselves, the richness, the potentialities they have. I think that that is really important, that we listen to the community and we just use the methods for, from the theater of the oppressed to encourage what they want and have to say. So yeah, I see this method as very, very applicative to working with minority groups, with youth, with um, and especially with LGBT people because there are so many areas where LGBT individuals and LGBT community is invisible, but we shouldn't be. Well, the TDO, you can uh, go <laughs> out of the boxes. <laughs> I'm so grateful to the theater of the first. It changed my life. Another way to change the world.